Hello, and welcome back to another show or episode of me showing you radioactive material, radioactive stuff which you can find in the household or out in the nature. Last time I was um, revisiting an, a piece of rock which I found last year in a uranium mine and today I have something really special here. What you can see here is, is a piece of pottery which I bought last week from the United States from a little old lady which is running a little antique store in Pennsylvania. Now after around seven days it arrived per mail and what you can see here is actually considered mildly radioactive. Um, the pottery itself is called Fiesta Ware and was introduced to the United States around in the mid 30s and produced up to the late 70s early 80s and what's so special about it is that the first produced pottery of this sort used uranium oxide for this wonderful reddish orange color what you can see here and therefore it's it's a little bit radioactive which we will see later here you can also see the logo of the brand Fiesta made in the United States I mean it it is a beautiful pottery piece of pottery and people were using it extensively they were having their dishes on it the dinner the breakfast everything and yeah about this company I've, I did find a little bit and it was actually the company itself was called Homer Laughlin China Company and had its main seat in New West Virginia. It produced, as I said earlier, from 1936 to around 1985, and it ranged from these plates to all kind of different pieces of pottery, which you could imagine. They did not only produce this reddish style; they also had blue, they had yellow, they had green colors. But of course, the red one, because it is created by uranium oxide is the most radioactive material or the most radioactive pottery that's why I ordered it <laughs> to show it to you and and what's also interesting about this pottery is during World War II because the United States were needing the uranium for the production of the atomic bombs which were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki they actually um, took the uranium, deep, uh, the, ura the mined uranium from the company seized it and used it for the bombs. So after the, uh, the company itself had to stop producing this kind of pottery from 1944 on and could only reproduce the pottery after the end of World War II and were not allowed to use normal uranium oxide anymore but to, had to use depleted uranium. It was a little bit. It was not as much as radioactive as... as it was back then, before the war, but it still was radioactive. So that's a little fact to know about this. So enough of the talk. Now I'm going to put on my Geiger counter and, well, let's see what it is actually saying. Shall we? We shall. Let's put it on and as you can see it is already going completely nuts. I will keep it there for maybe one or two minutes and I guess we will see how the, how the count will end and where we will, where we will stay actually. You can see we're already almost about 1000 counts so we are uh, almost doubled now what the, ra the radioactive re um, rock had um, in the last video so yeah I will be back later and show you where it actually ends. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. I've kept the Geiger counter running for quite a couple of minutes and we've reached our maximum peak of 2300 counts per minute which is around 15 microsieverts an hour and in these few minutes we've reached around 16,000 counts per minute in total which is for this time quite an insane amount to be fair and yeah after my Geiger counter is 
a device which can detect beta and gamma radiation but no alpha radiation this is only a small fraction of the radiation because uranium itself is an alpha emitter and this Geiger counter cannot detect this, this kind of radiation so with a Geiger counter detecting alpha radiation we're definitely quite up higher in the, in the um, count per minute but as it stands beta and gamma radiation is around 2300 counts per minute and 15 microsieverts which is it's okay for this kind of piece but I also want to show you that the radiation itself is not that strong because if if I move the Geiger counter away just a little bit as you can see it drops it drops quite he heavily as soon as I'm around 15 centimeters maybe 20 away we're going back to almost normal background radiation maybe we have to see how, how far it goes down but it's actually not that bad another interesting thing to notice if you want if you have this kind of pottery already at home don't be afraid of it just just don't eat from it um, keep it in a safe compartment a safe storage for example a display case which has plexiglass or normal glass and you're, you're basically fine plexiglass and normal glass which has a thickness of maybe half a centimeter um, is completely enough to block all of this radiation which you can see here and if you keep it behind a display case you won't get radiated let's put it like this the only thing to notice just don't eat from it <laughs> Don't eat it, don't eat from it. If you have a cup, don't don't drink from it. Just just have it as a nice as accessoire in your home. You can show it to your friends, even if you maybe are interested in buying yourself a Geiger counter. You can a little bit shock them of course if you want. I mean about this radiation which we have here, we have around 2300 counts per minute. Um, the normal background radiation here in my area is around 20. 22 counts per minute so we can roughly say this pottery here which I have is around 100 times stronger than the normal uh, background radiation around this part so yeah not bad not good just keep it like that <laughs> in the future of course um, I try to find more of these kind of things to present them to you of course and well if you have enjoyed this video if you, if you have enjoyed these informations I've given to you um, maybe please give a like to the video and if you're interested in more of this maybe subscribe to my channel channel thank you very much and see you next time bye